Franz Jäger's daughter was born in 1907 in St. Radegund, Austria, not far from the birthplaces of both Adolf Hitler and Joseph Ratzinger, the future Pope Benedict XVI. Jäger's daughter's father abandoned him and his mother and later died in the First World War. His mother married Heinrich Jäger's daughter, who adopted Franz and gave him his name. Franz received his education in a one-room schoolhouse and was known to be a fairly wild young man. At 26, he fathered a child out of wedlock and did not marry the child's mother. When he met his wife, Franziska, in 1936, his life changed in profound ways. While in Rome for their honeymoon, Franziska and Franz received a blessing from Pope Pius XI. Franz later claimed that this was a spiritual awakening for him. After that, he became a secular Franciscan, read the scriptures and other religious literature every day, and he and Franziska prayed together daily. He became the sacristan of the local parish church in St. Radegon. The couple would have three daughters together. In 1938, much of Austria began to go the way of Nazism. Hitler himself was Austrian, and he was wildly popular in his home country. In fact, Jägerstadter was the only citizen in his village to vote against Nazi annexation of Austria. Twice, in 1940 and 1941, he was called to military duty for the Nazis, and he went and served, but thanks to the intervention of his mayor, he was released both times. Gradually, Jägerstadter became convinced that to serve under the Nazis could not be reconciled to faith in Christ, and was indeed seriously sinful. So in 1943, when he was tapped for military service a third time, he refused induction and offered to perform nonviolent service instead. His offer was refused. Jägerstadter was charged with sedition and thrown into prison. Nazi authorities sentenced him to death in July 1943. In refusing to serve in the Nazi army, Franz Jägerstadter was utterly alone among his villages. They considered him a stubborn religious extremist and accused him of acting irresponsibly toward his wife and three young daughters. In a long spiritual and intellectual struggle during the late 1930s and early 1940s that culminated in his decision to refuse induction into Hitler's army, Jägerstadter sought counsel from a number of priests and from his bishop. While none of them was pro-Nazi, and several of them later suffered at the hands of the Nazis, all of them encouraged him to compromise. They tried to talk him out of his conviction that serving the German war effort was so totally incompatible with his Christian faith that conscience compelled him to refuse. The night before his execution, a Catholic chaplain visiting him in his cell pointed to a document on the table. Jägerstadter need only sign it and his life would be spared. The priest later recalled that Jägerstadter pushed it aside with a smile and explained, I cannot and may not take an oath in favor of a government that is fighting an unjust war. The prison chaplain was surprised that he was so much at peace, so tranquil. When offered a copy of the Bible to read, Jägerstadter replied, I am completely bound in inner union with the Lord, and any reading would only interrupt my communication with God. Just prior to his death, he wrote these words, If I must write with my hands in chains, I find that much better than if my will were in chains. Neither prison nor chains nor sentence of death can rob a man of the faith and of his free will. God gives so much strength that it is possible to bear any suffering. People worry about the obligations of conscience as they concern my wife and children. But I cannot believe that just because one has a wife and children, a man is free to offend God. Jaeger Stadter would bow only to Jesus Christ and refused to bow his head to Hitler and the Nazis or even to church authorities. And bow his head he did when the blade of the guillotine came thundering down. Franz Jägerstadter was beheaded on August 9, 1943. He died a martyr, refusing to compromise his faith to serve in an unjust cause and an immoral war. Like St. Thomas More and St. Maximilian Kolbe and so many others, he was a man of conscience who was killed because his first loyalty was to Jesus Christ. The priest who accompanied Jägerstadter to the scaffold where he was beheaded marveled at the prisoner's calm. He said later to some local nuns, I can only congratulate you on this countryman of yours who lived as a saint and has now died as a hero. 
I say with certainty that this simple man is the only saint I have ever met in my lifetime. A martyr for the faith, Jaeger's daughter was beatified in 2007. Franziska and all four of Jaeger's daughter's daughters were present for the beatification. The papal representative who presided over the beatification mass, Cardinal Martins, said, Jägerstadter's life and now his beatification present a challenge and encouragement to those aspiring to live the Christian faith with coherence and radical commitment even when facing extreme consequences. The cathedral where the beatification mass was held is just a few blocks from what was once a convent which the Nazis seized and used as a prison. It was in that place of torture that Jägerstadter was held before being transferred to Berlin, where he was eventually sentenced and executed. A plaque at the former prison explains Jägerstadter's connection with the place. Jägerstadter's life and witness is a challenge to all of us. It is a challenge to the values and priorities of the culture. It is also a challenge to the church which now honors him, but failed to support him and other conscientious objectors in their time of need. Franz Jägerstadter's martyrdom raises serious questions about the often competing demands of God and Caesar.